Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to teach you guys how to operate and take full advantage of a Garmin Nuvi 255W or 265W GPS. Now the 255, Nuvi 255 and Nuvi 265 are about the same except they're smaller sized screen. Now the difference between a 255W and 265W is just the Bluetooth capability. The 265W is equipped with Bluetooth where the 255 does not support Bluetooth. Otherwise they're identical units. Now this unit that I will be working on is a Garmin Nuvi 255W. So here is how we operate that unit. First, when you turn it on, this is the screen that you're going to get. Before you try to navigate or punch in an address, I recommend that you go to settings, tools and settings and change a few things based on your own preferences. So you go to tools, you go to settings, you go to system. Here is GPS simulator. It's good to leave it off because if you don't leave it off, the unit will simulate if you are inside uh, indoors or inside a tunnel. If you leave it off, the GPS will be uh, the GPS uh, receiver will be turned on and it will actively look for GPS signals. Okay, usage mode. It's good to choose automobile, but if you are a bicyclist or a pedestrian, you have to choose accordingly. If you were to choose uh, uh, automobile, it will give you navigation based on an automobile. If you choose a bicycle, it will give you navigation based on uh, your vehicle. If you have a bicycle, it will avoid you from going to freeways. Uh, if you're in Europe, it will avoid autobahns or high-speed roads where bicycles are not allowed. And if you're pedestrians, it will not take you to the routes where cars are allowed and not pedestrians. And also it will avoid uh, the freeways because pedestrians obviously cannot go in, in the freeways. Okay? So it's important to choose the correct uh, choice for your needs. Uh, so in this case it's automobile. Okay? Now, uh, units of measurement. It's currently set for European measurements, but if you're in the United States you have to set it to miles. Now, you're probably going to ask... Uh, why? What difference does it make if I choose miles and if I'm driving in Europe? Well, if you choose miles in Europe, what happens is that the freeway uh, speed signs are all in kilometers. The uh, your approaching exit will be written in kilometers. So if your GPS is showing a different unit of measurement, it will be very confusing. Also, the speed limit will be shown in kilometers. So your GPS, if you're over speeding, your GPS will not warn you. Uh, because uh, you're not going to see what's your speed on the screen of the GPS because uh, it's set to miles. So that's why it's good to uh, choose the correct unit of measurements uh, for the correct calculation and correct warnings and correct approaching your exit and whatnot. Uh, for example, if it says your exit will be in two miles you have to exit and you see the signs on the freeway that says three kilometers to such and such exit. You don't know. You have to convert that kilometer to miles. So it's good to choose the correct unit of measurements. Okay. And this is the keyboard layout. The keyboard layout, uh, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, is the layout uh, used in computers and uh, typewriters. And that's the one I recommend. But if you choose A, B, C, D, E, then the alphabet will show A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, like that. But if you choose Q, W, E, R, T, Y, it will be identical to a computer keyboard, which is much easier. So that's what I recommend. Okay, so you go back and then navigation. In navigation, there are several different options. You could choose faster time, shorter distance, less fuel, off-road. I will explain each one. Faster time, it will take you through the freeways. Uh, uh, shorter distance, it will take you to the shortest distance, despite the fact that that shortest distance could have tons of red lights, tons of stop signs, and tons of little uh, alleys and neighborhood streets. So this will not get you from point A to point B at the fastest time, but it will be the shortest distance. 
Uh, now, this is only handy if you are renting a vehicle and that rental car is charging you by the mile. And time is not important for you. In that case, you choose shortest distance. Because if you go through the freeway in fastest time, it could be much longer distance to travel. And if your rental car is charging you by the mile, you will pay a lot more if you choose that option. Less fuel is good if, if you're in a place where there are a lot of uphills and downhills like San Francisco. Now, the less fuel option will take you through a route where the elevation will remain steady, relatively steady. Obviously, there is no way you can control the elevation. The elevation of, of the road or, or off your route will be relatively steady, uh, plain, not too many uphills and downhills, which, will which is actually the fuel killers. Uh, what really uh, uh, kills your fuel is when you go uphill uh, and spend a lot of fuel to go uphill and then you, when you come downhill you have to use lower gears which is also spending more fuel in order to compensate for the downhill okay off-roading you you must uh, uh, avoid if your vehicle is a low rider or a sports vehicle and it's not an SUV or high profile vehicle then you choose to avoid uh, off-roading and whatnot okay uh, now that comes in avoidance. This is route preferences. I, I will talk about avoidance in the next chapter. Okay. So this is the avoidance. Okay, now avoidance. You have to avoid U-turns if you're traveling in a uh, bus. Um, you have to avoid U-turns if you're traveling in a RV, motorhome. That's at least 30 foot or longer, which cannot make a U-turn. Um, okay, so that's, that's if you check that box, if you check this, that's what the GPS will avoid. If you leave it unchecked, it will take you through U-turns. Okay, highways. You have to avoid highways if you're have if riding a bicycle or a, a, a motorized bicycles, which is very common in Europe, and they're not allowed in uh, autobahns uh, or highways. So that's very important. Okay, uh, toll roads. You have to avoid toll roads if you don't have cash with you or credit card, and you're traveling through a uh, foreign uh, country and you don't even have their currency, and they don't accept credit cards, so it's going to be, in, in European countries, this will be really handy to avoid toll roads, because everywhere you go, there is a toll road. Now, sometimes avoiding toll road will cost you more in a in longer route, so it's good to have cash and use the toll roads than to go through the, like, villages and mountains and places where there is no toll road, but it will cost you a lot more in time and, and gas. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Avoiding traffic is a good thing, but not always because sometimes it's good to go through like an hour of a traf an hour of traffic than to go through neighborhoods and 200 red lights. So that's something that you need to take in consideration. Ferries are also important to avoid if you have a big vehicle like a motorhome or a truck. You cannot take a motorhome and a ferry. So th those are made for little cars. So these are the things you need to keep in consideration. What to avoid. Now there are additional avoidance. You have to click the arrow to go. Uh, carpool lanes. You have to avoid carpool lanes if you're traveling alone. In carpool lanes you have to be two or more people. Which is also known as HOV lane. HOV stands, stands for High Occupancy Vehicle. Now, carpool lanes or HOV lane uh, um, are for mo one or more people. If you're a single person, avoid it. So check that box to avoid carpool lanes. Avoid un unpaved roads or, or off-roads if your vehicle cannot handle off-roads. Now, if you have an SUV, you don't necessarily have to avoid off-roads, unpaved roads. But, or if you... Sometimes you even you want to avoid off-roading if you don't want your car to get dirty because there will be a lot of dust in unpaved roads, okay? All right, we go back and we go to display. We, we explain navigation, now we are going to display. Display, if you choose daytime, this is the layout of the screen. If you choose nighttime, the layout of the screen will be all dark and uh, the writings will be white. And if you choose automatic, it will change to day and night automatically and when it gets dark. So for this video, I will keep it on daytime, but you could leave it to whatever option you like, okay? Now, we go to screen 
screenshot. Screenshot is if you enable it, you can take a picture of the screen or a picture of an, a scenery or a map layout where you are. Uh, for example, if you go to a relative's house and you want to get a snapshot of their streets around in the surrounding, you could enable and take a screenshot. But if it's disabled, it's uh, you can't take a screenshot. Okay. Now brightness. Brightness is currently at forty percent. You can increase the brightness at fifty, sixty, seventy, and so on. So I like the sixty more because in, in sixty I don't see the flicker in my camera. But usually you have to choose whichever one is, suits your eyes. Okay. I go back. Uh, now I go to time. Now the time. It's good to leave the current time in automatic format. Automatic format will detect where you are geographically on the planet and it will adjust the time accordingly based on the uh, satellite signals. So choose automatic, that's the best. Time format, you could choose 12 hour or 24 hour, that dep depends on you. If you choose 24 hours, uh, it's gonna be after 12, it will be, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, and U UTC is uh, also for automatic of time based on where you are geographically. Okay, now we go back and choose language. Now, any language that's uh, accompanied with TTS, that's text to speech recognition. So, uh, text to speech, um, it will read the street names. For example, if you choose a TTS uh, file, uh, voice, it will say turn right on Broadway. If you choose a regular voice, it will just turn you, tell you turn right. It doesn't speak the name of the street, Broadway. Uh, same thing with like Second Street. It will, if you choose TTS, it will say turn right on Second Street. Otherwise, it will just say turn right. So text to speech is pretty good, but it's not available in every language. If you go see uh, text to speech is available in English with a men's voice, with women's voice, Samantha, text to speech in Arabic language, it's not available. In Australian English, you have text to speech. In British English, you have text to speech, but in all these languages, it's not available, so on. So you have to see which language has text to speech and choose the one you like accordingly. Okay, map. The map preferences, I like it to be in most. If you choose more, you will not see the details of small roads. If you choose normal, you will not see little streets and alleys. If you choose less, you only see major roads and highways. You don't see the rest. I like most because it covers everything. For example, if I choose most and I choose zoom in, watch. I see all these little streets, right? And then if I go out and zoom out and out and out, I will see all the freeways. See that? Okay, if I choose less, and I go out, out. It shows me the freeways, but not the little, little, little roads. Let me show you the difference here. Okay, in this map, in this particular map, you don't see the difference. But when you're driving, you see a big difference. So I'm going to leave it on most. Okay? All right. Map preferences, uh, map view. If you want a 3D, the vehicle, the, the layout of the land will be like three-dimensional. The vehicle will be traveling this way. If you choose north up, the layout of the map will be flat like a paper and where only north will be showing on top. So if you're going south, the, your vehicle will be moving this way on the screen. If you're going uh, west, your vehicle will be moving this way on the screen. If you're going east, the, your vehicle will be moving this way. So that's the north up. If you choose track up, the map will be flat like a paper, not 3D, but whichever direction you're going will be up, so not necessarily north. If, if you're going south, it will show up on the screen. I like the 3D option, but that's something you need to see which one you like. Okay. Vehicle is the type of car you have. You could choose additional vehicles from download uh, from Garmin.com, but that's not necessary. There's so many already on the uh, on the GPS. You don't need additional vehicles. You have a truck. You have a car. You have a arrow. You have a different car. There's a whole. There's a crow. There's a whole bunch to choose from, ball and whatnot. So I like the blue car, which which is already there. This blue car. So I'm gonna cancel. I'm not gonna change that. Trip log is good to have if you always get lost, you're somebody who uh, 
uh, who is usually going in circles. The trip log will show you where you have already been in a highlighted blue color. So if you're making circles, you will be stepping over that blue color that you drove once. So it's good to show that trip log if you are a new driver or in a place that you have never been before. In normal everyday life, I like to hide it, okay? Let's go back. Oh, map info. This is how you can tell the information about the map. So this uh, GPS, it has North American 2018.2, Western United States, Western Canada, Alaska, Mexico, and Hawaii. Now this GPS uh, internal memory is about two megabytes, uh, two gigabytes. The, the North American map is huge. It's huge. So there is no way to fit everything uh, north and south and everything uh, in the same uh, uh, memory and I mean the, in, 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 in on the internal memory so what we do is we split it now I'm going to show you how that works in order to get a complete map of the United States Canada and Mexico what we do is we put half of the map on the GPS internal memory the other half and an SD card and as soon as you plug in the SD card watch what happens The rest of the map shows up. See, now we have eastern and western, from east coast to west coast, Canada, Mexico, Alaska, Hawaii, everywhere is included here. So that's how the maps work. Okay? Now, uh, map info, everything. Okay, so we go back and scroll down. When you scroll down, security. Security is very important to understand. Garmin lock is off. If I turn on the Garmin lock, uh, the, it will look at the GPS coordinates and it will ask me for the password. So if I if I click on it. So it will ask me for a four digit password or pin code uh, to enter. And if I forget that pin code to unlock my Garmin, I have to be in the same geographic location where I set the screen, set the lock, and from the GPS, GPS coordinates, it will unlock itself. So if you set this up at home, it will only unlock itself when you are at home unless you know the password. If you know the password, you can unlock it everywhere in the world. If you don't, you have to come home for it to automatically unlock. So that's the reason I don't like to use that because it's uh, risky. If you travel, if you move out of that house and you're not there in that house anymore and you forget the pin, uh, for, then your GPS is a doorstop. You have to throw it away. That's why I don't like to use it. Okay, safe mode is good to be off because... It's good to be on if you're a new driver. It's good to be off if you're a professional driver. What it does, it, if you turn it on, it will not allow you to enter an address or do anything with a GPS when the vehicle is in motion. It will ask you to pull over to the side of the road, safely enter the address where you're going, and move on. Now, the reason I don't like that is because uh, when I travel, sometimes I ask my wife to enter the address for me. So it's not like I'm doing it. I'll be keeping my eyes on the road and she will be entering the address so that's why I leave it disabled or off because uh, it's it's a it's a headache if you have a passenger traveling with you in the vehicle okay so it's off all right go back okay proximity points this is not available in all garments this one happens to have uh, these are different things you can purchase from Garmin. In this one, uh, it's a, a Garmin safety camera. This is something very, very good. If it's checked, that means it will warn you as you approach safety cameras uh, in different places. Uh, the safety camera means the cameras that will catch you and take your picture if you're speeding or the, ca or the cameras that will catch you if you're running a red light. So these are the safety cameras that are throughout the world. They have a lot of them in Europe and United States, Canada, everywhere. So if you're a risky driver, it's good to have this. It will warn you as you approach a safety camera. It's not illegal. It's totally legal. In most countries, it's completely legal, except, except in France. In France, you cannot have that. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, in the United States, Canada, everywhere, it's legal. You could have, say, you can buy it from Garmin legally. From you can download this software from Garmin, uh, safety camera. I think it's about thirty dollars or so, and it will warn you as you approach a red light. So if you check it, it will warn you. If you uncheck it, it will not warn you. So 
good to have it checked okay so that's that let's go back and this was the, the set setting now we go to operation the volume control is here you could go up and down and you can mute it there this is the mute so it's completely sound free now you go where to if you want to go enter an address you go to address if you want to change the country you click on change country so change country again so let's say I'm going somewhere in Mexico there you go I just put M and it will bring Mexico if I'm going somewhere in Canada I put C so there uh, two countries are loaded came came in islands in Canada if I want to go to the United States in an address I call U United States or US Virgin Islands so you choose United States and the uh, interstate so whatever state New York California whatever so you put it in when you as soon as you put C it gives you the list of the states to start with C so California Colorado Connecticut and same thing if I put V it gave me Virginia Vermont every word you put it will give you the list and then you choose so if I choose California I'm gonna choose California now sp spell city or postal code whichever one is convenient for you obviously postal code is easier to enter than the name of the city so I'm gonna choose postal code which is nine two one 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 okay so I choose that now enter house number I'm gonna put the address 3582 done now the street mount mount where is the space there is a space Acadia okay Mount Acadia this is a random address so I, I chose that address and if I want to go there I click go and it's gonna take me it will navigate obviously now it's calculating because there's no GPS signal we are indoors but you know you get the picture that's how it does now if you want to go to your home you just click go home that's simple enter your address if you have on you haven't already entered but if you have already entered it as soon as you click home it will it will navigate you don't have to enter your address point of interest is very important if you click point of interest it will take you to places like uh, food fuel shopping uh, lodging uh, transit bank ATM parking garage entertainment a tourist attraction hospitals the list goes on and on okay so the points of interest if you don't know the name let's say you're in a foreign country or in a foreign city or a different city than where you live and you want to go to Starbucks and you don't know where it is so you just spell name you go to spell name star s t a r b u c k s done it will search make some circles and search now the search will be a lot faster if this has GPS signal because right now it doesn't know which area to search so it's searching everywhere on in the in, in the US you know so there you go so these are the lists of Starbucks and you choose the one that's closest to you and this uh, southeast southwest east northwest tells you which direction the Starbucks you want to go to is located so if this is 0.1 mile e southeast of where I am this one is 0.2 mile southwest this one is 0.3 mile east 0.3 mi mile northwest okay so that's something that you need to know now that was points of interest recently found is the list of places that you've already been for example you went to this friend's house now you, you forgot to write his address you just go to recently found and it will be in the list see right now I entered this one now it's a, it's there already okay and favorites usually the favorites of Garmin is already preloaded on Garmin GPS's uh, they, like the actual gun Garmin uh, uh, the corporation these are the, the corporate addresses for different areas Europe USA and Asia but you could add uh, more favorites to it intersection is very important a lot of countries do not have good navigation system so uh, good I'm sorry good addressing system in their houses and businesses so they gave directions with the intersections and they tell their visitors to come to let's say in my business in the, is in the intersection of Broadway and 2nd Avenue 
and then you could walk like 500 feet or 500 meters to north or south or west of that intersection and you will find me so that's why that's good to have and coordinates is ex okay let me explain about extras extra is something you buy from Garmin it's like dictionary or translators things like that they're they don't, they're not normally included with your GPS but you can buy them like that see no extras loaded cities you could navigate to a particular city browse the map is a very good one because you click on it you look at the map and then you you tap your finger somewhere you need to go and it will take you there so that's a good thing to have coordinates is good and coordinates remember in a lot of countries where the addressing is very complicated it's good to ask for your hotel or wherever you're staying to give you the coordinates the coordinates are made of two sets of numbers north west or south and east and you have to make sure to put the correct coordinates for example this address right here is north 41 degrees 53 uh, minutes and 655 seconds and whatnot same way with, with west you can enter the address now these could be changed to south this could be changed to east and all these could be changed you have to make sure the northwest south east are correct because if you put the wrong coordinates it, it could be a location on the planet which is on the above the ocean or in the middle of the ocean so it's good to make sure that you put north south east west correctly with the coordinates and the gps will take you exactly to the place okay so this was you know the information you needed to know about this garmin uh, nuvi 255 265 or any nuvi 200 series GPS. These are very nice GPS units. It's this is how you release it from the latch, and uh, this is where the power cord goes in. This is like the actual mount. It snaps into the mount like this, like that, and you can move it back and forth whichever way you're sitting in the vehicle, so it can face you without having to have any problems looking at the screen. Alright, okay, I hope this uh, um, tutorial was educational and you learned something good, useful out of it. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.